Is it better to have capital growth in your portfolio or cash flow? In my case, I always believe that we need both, but let's explore what is actually better than the other. If you're interested, keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now, if you are interested in more content like this, definitely smash that subscribe button because I am bringing out videos every single day on this channel. And if you want more, then you can definitely go join the Patreon community. So let's jump into my whiteboard now and talk about this whole situation around capital growth is better than cash flow or cash flow is better than capital growth. And it really comes down to what your goals are. Now, usually what people have is the goal of having passive income income, which will ultimately allow them to retire early. And therefore, the answer should be cash flow, right? So if you've just come for that part of the video, you can leave now. Well, look, it's not as simple as that because the reality is in this case, yes, if you just want passive income, the cash flow is going to get you there. But is the cash flow alone to get you to your goal? So if your passive income goal is $20,000 a year, yeah, you should probably just go for cash flow properties, happy days. But if you're looking at ultimately building out wealth and generational wealth that you can retire on and you want to get 100K plus, then you're going to need both a combination of cash flow and capital growth, which we're going to illustrate in our example here. So in this example, we've got property A and property B. To make this example really simple to understand, we're going to assume no debt, okay? Now, both are purchased for $450,000. Property A is rented for $480 per week, whereas property B is in a rural town somewhere, probably around mining, and it's going to get you about 700 bucks per week. Now, as soon as you see that number, you're like, high yield, oh my God, that's what I want to get. Now, these deals are still available out there, but it's not a deal that we would do under our own buyer's agency. So as part of our process for our clients, it's long-term wealth. And you're going to get that when you get the capital growth there. With something like property B, in order to achieve such a high yield, you're probably in an area that is close to mining and it is a super volatile market. All you have to do is go ask anyone that bought property in Perth in like 2010 to 2012, and they'll tell you the same stories. So in this case, the ongoing cost per year is about $5,000 for property A, and it's about $6,500 for property B. And this would include things like property management fees. So based on this, we've got $24,960 $24,960 in terms of rent from property A. And then when we look at property B, it's coming out to $36,400. Now, obviously you'd have to take out your ongoing costs, but straight away you can see the difference of about $11,000 on property B. So does property B actually win? Well, so far, cash flow is looking like a pretty good option. And before you jump onto realestate.com, watch all the way through because you're gonna understand the relationship between having the right portfolio that's scalable and why so many people get stuck because they go more heavy on one over the other. Now, does your decision change if property A is growing at 7% whereas property B is growing at 3%? Well, it should because property A would then make 31,500 in growth whereas property B will be only 13,500 and that would mean a difference of about $18,000. So that would completely offset the gains that you would make just from the cash flow. But in addition to that, the cash flow is taxed. And that's what I've got here is the cash flow is taxed whereas the growth is not. And the way it works is that if your property is growing in value, you're not going out there and saying, well, that's money that I'm gonna use right now. It's just growing, which means it's capital growth. The only time you're gonna really have to pay on capital growth is your capital gains tax, which again happens when you sell the property. Not only that, but the other advantage you have is if the property has grown in value and you decide to take some of that equity out, you could go and use that for another purchase. And your question might be, well, Ravi, when I use that equity, isn't that tax? Well, it's not because equity in your eyes is actually debt in the eyes of the bank. So you're actually taking out further debt. So you can't be taxed on debt. And that's such a big hack when you go around and build a portfolio that's scalable that you've got to understand your tax obligations. I'm not a tax expert and I'm definitely not an accountant. So definitely go and reach out to the people in your network to be able to assist you with that sort of stuff. So with knowing all of this, what does that ultimately mean for cash flow and capital growth? Well, what I got taught early on was cash flow keeps you in the game, whereas capital growth gets you out of it. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And the way you've got to think about this is that the cash flow allows you to keep borrowing. It might not allow you to borrow straight away, but it could ultimately lead to a greater borrowing capacity later down the track if you have a higher rental income and cash flow. Not only that, but when you're looking at times of volatility, your whole idea is how do I hold and maintain my wealth? So preserve my wealth. In the case of real estate, if interest rates have gone up so quickly, you don't want to be in a position where you're like, I can't afford those repayments. So if you had really strong cash flow and it may be positive 
positive last year, but now it's neutral, well, guess what? It's still not affecting your day to day, which means at the height of interest rates, you're still operating, you're still holding your real estate. If we see rate cuts happen later this year, and then you've got your rents increasing, now you've gone through the worst period from a cash flow perspective, and now you'll realize those gains later on with the cash flow as well. The capital growth aspect is where you can multiply your wealth fairly quickly, and that, because it's not taxed, allows you to grow so much quicker. And that is why if you don't have capital growth in your portfolio, unfortunately, you're playing in the loser's game when it comes to real estate. You want best of both worlds. Because think about it, if you have a lot of cash flow, but your properties aren't growing in value, sure, you could use the extra cash flow, pay down your debt, or ultimately try and save up for another deposit. But if you had properties growing at five, six, seven percent, then you'd ultimately be in a place where you can actually go and realize some of that equity to go and build towards a deposit. And I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. So as I mentioned, cash flow allows you to borrow more, and that ultimately could mean that you have a bigger portfolio. And that is the whole game here. How do I acquire as many assets as possible? How do I grow my machine to be you know, of substantial size to allow me financial freedom and early retirement? Now you need both, and I can't stress this enough. I've got people that have shown me their portfolio and they've said, look, Rav, you know, this is actually grown by $100,000. I'm like 100,000 on a $1.2 million property is probably like 8%. So if we were to get 8% somewhere else and we had cash flow about 5.5%, that would outperform your asset, which you're only getting about two or three percent rental yields on. So check out this example. With strong cash flow, you can buy more. So in this case, if you had a portfolio worth say $2 million and it was giving you about $100,000 worth of rent, maybe you're maxed out. So in the bank's eyes, your borrowing capacity is maxed. You can't do anything else. But if we had the same $2 million portfolio, except our rentals were higher at 150K, we could potentially borrow an extra $300,000, meaning our portfolio is actually 2.3 million versus the 2 million we have here. So you can see as well that the way the banks look at your debt, the way that they look at your servicing and your borrowing capacity means there is an advantage when you can get both. Because even if you have equity in your property and you don't have enough cash flow, you can't even access that equity anyway. And vice versa, if you've got great cash flow and borrowing capacity, you're gonna have to wait till you've saved up enough because your properties aren't growing in value. So the capital growth allows you to get equity and that equity allows you to get into fast deposits. And the fast deposits means that you can repeat this process time and time again. Now, the whole goal that we have at Search Property when we're looking at properties for our clients is that we want a minimum of 5.2% yield. And we're also looking at minimum 7% growth. I only had one of our clients reach out this morning where we had purchased a property for them in September and we purchased that one for about 362,000 and now it's coming in at about 395,000. So that's about a 9.1% increase in just six months. So if you annualize those returns, it's far greater than 7% because you're sitting at about 18%. Now that's just one of many examples. So if you are interested in this sort of strategy and you're like, cool, that's great, I've got the theory, now I need to execute. And again, a plan without execution means nothing. Then you can definitely go into the links in the description below where you'll find the website for Search Property. You'll find a 35 minute video as well. I'll link that up here as well, which basically walks you through the entire process of what we do and how we do it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, learned a thing or two. And if you have, smash that like button and share it with someone that you know could benefit from this sort of information. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.